Hi, it's Joy, and today I'm going to be watching Batwoman Season 3, Episode 5, A Lesson from Professor Pig. And I am just picturing the pig from Dead by Daylight. So, um, I am very excited to jump back into this show, as always. These, oh, just, I'm, I'm loving Batwoman. Every episode so far has left me desperate for the next one. I'm very stressed about Mary. Let's go. A reminder that you can find the unedited version of this reaction on my Patreon. And let's go. Stop. <laughs> I'm so excited for these two living together. Sophie's actually spending time with her. Is it like Ryan come to check everything's okay? Yeah. I'll have someone from Mary's clinic pick up the body so she can do a thorough exam. You need to figure out. Poor Mary. She trained to like be a mortician or medical examiner. Wayne's stock is down 53% and our crisis management team just quit. Etsy, Jesus Christ. Do, please ignore Of course she turns an easy email into a massive carbon footprint. <laughs> she just takes needing so badly that we had to... Oh, Mary, my darling. Okay, look, we need None of them know this, have noticed that there's something up with her and they, no one has checked in with her about the night in the park. She's not okay, people. Is she like a plant that needs water? It's not a date. It's recon. It's fake dating. Well. Get your ass to her office now. Uh. I still can't get over the fact that Alice is kind of like I get that why they trust her to like take public transport and everything or whatever because she's got now like tracking her every move. But could you imagine if you were like a taxi driver or an Uber driver or just a pedestrian on the street and you just see Alice, that criminal that was all over the news as a mass murderer, just strolling around? You'd be terrified. Girlfriend, actually. Sophie. Nice to meet you. Fake dating. Well. The madam has requested preparations for another guest. Oh, the more the merrier. This is so weird. Is that a roasted pig? Is this Professor Pig? To teach the class how to squeal. Oh, this. Well, this seems wonderful. Why has Jada hired a mad super villain man? So how did you two? Meet? I guess she didn't know. Down the, the chips. chips. <laughs> they are so convincing. I just want someone who's loyal. Mm -hmm. I know that if I were dying, Sophie would sit beside me, put her arms around me, oh. and tell me everything would be okay. Okay, I like them a lot. Because she's done that. I couldn't have been more clear when I told you to stay away from my family. Yes, but your and son has other ideas. Rich, coming from the woman who convinced me she was dead. Mm -hmm. Dying will be the easy part, Ryan. For you and a lot of folks, if you don't do exactly what I say. What is with this woman? Heard there was a family dinner. It's not a family dinner. What is going on? I'm gonna send you a face to run through wreck. Uh, go for it. Standing by. Oh god. Sophie? I hate to break it to you. She already knows about the partnership. How? You! you! There was a picture between the two of you! You were all over Ryan at that event. And Ryan was like, we shouldn't be seen in public. And you were all, yeah, we should. If it's not a Catwoman wannabe, then use that beautifully meant in mine and tell me who would string up. And what if it's a new person? Catwoman. You don't know. It could be a new criminal just starting out or just making it big rather than doing small murders. I don't like this lady. I don't trust her. Not possible to. What's with your creepy obsession with poison ivy? Ooh. What are you talking about? You brought us together to find one. Lenny Vixen in particular. Is Poison Ivy still out there or is it just the vine? <laughs> well, how much does that girl know? A steamed chef flew from Metropolis to cook for us. He comes highly recommended. Who by? Hannibal Lecter? So if I may, that's bad because he has a codependent relationship with his mother who now sees you as a threat to her <laughs> Thank you for giving me up. Thank you for mm -hmm. walking away and letting me be someone else's problem. Because I didn't get the butlers or the five course meal or the mansion. I got a home. I got love. Only a little bit life. of it, but so true. See, there are times like that where Ryan speaks to Jada and Jada seems moved. And then there are other times where Jada's like, ha ha ha, put my son on ice, ha ha ha. What is going on? Oh Lord, is she being poisoned? Call for help. Holy shit. Why is this a slasher film now? 
Oh shit. So she didn't okay? cause this? Relax. Holy shit. This is horrific! Just a little. You'll lose yours. You told Marcus about this dinner. How else could you watch me chop him into bacon bits? Who was the one more? But the unexpected. She was expecting. <laughs> yes, I thought Ryan was the lady in reacting. She hadn't drunk anything, right? Or eaten the pig? It was a paralytic in the pig? Oh no, she is just she's affected, but it's not as bad as he thinks. They didn't drink as much. Oh lord. This is like a horror movie. There must be other exits. You must have like a panic room. Luke surely knows something's up as well. Oh. I mean, if there's one way to bond with your estranged family, it's to be, you know, hunted by a slasher villain. And maybe take your high heels off. <laughs> yes, Ryan! How much can this weird pig man take? Like, while he's down, they should- I know oh, they're paralyzed, she probably wouldn't be strong enough to restrain him. Panic room? Holy shit! <laughs> when I was saying it reminds me of the pig from Dead by Daylight, I wasn't too wrong. We'll eventually realize we're missing and come looking for us. We just need to hang until then. <sighs> Oh my god, what's happening? Is it a side effect of the paralytic? Or is it something through the vent? I don't really care right now. This would be so interesting if there wasn't a horror movie happening elsewhere. Couldn't turn her into a green thumb psycho. But she didn't see it that way. She wanted to save the planet. And that meant punishing anyone, destroying it. My theory is he hit her under the city somewhere. Away from water and sunlight and anyone she could hurt. But then she'll be dead. Bury your girlfriend alive. Because I told them to. Interesting. This shouldn't be happening. Mm -hmm. shouldn't ha Alice, talk to Mary. I know why you don't want to, but if you are vulnerable, maybe it will help. Drink the water, Marcus. With our camping gear. In the basement. Holy shit, of course it's in the basement! Far away as freaking possible! Oh shit. Why does he decide he wants to be a freaking pig? Oh my god. This episode so should have come out over Halloween. Your family is alive, they just do not want you. And I doubt it was just that you lost your job. How the hell is she gonna get back up to the panic room? Wasn't pretty. So why does she want to put him on ice? Or does she have another son somewhere? What on earth was last week's episode about? She made it. Killed three of her friends. Nearly killed her. What what are you talking about? It's very easy to say, oh, was it just some corporate espionage? I had no idea it was anything else. I didn't know about human experiments being I mean, I'm sorry, he is going to make it in here. And then how the hell does Ryan get out? Oh Ryan. Who was the oh it's literally just occurred to me that when she told the chef to prepare for another, that was Sophie. I'm an idiot. Mary suddenly a green thumb. Alice, notice, please. Alice is going to be the person to notice. Plants are smarter than humans. They're resilient. They're intuitive. They give back more than they take. Gus. Alice, what does this remind you of? Duty to help me when the time comes. Well. Finally. Between the Finally, Alice. Arkham. Creep, which is so, Alice. All of the murders, the pain, the misery that you've inflicted. They were the seeds that you planted for the garden you'll be buried in. This is the plant talking. I mean, it's not entirely not what Mary's thinking. Got it. But that wasn't a Mary response. You, which is so frustrating because Alice was finally opening herself up. But is she noticing something weird with the plants and the seed and the garden comments and... Speaking of 
miss you, Mac. Put in hemlock. Poison ivy. Finally! Oh my god. I mean, he does want to kill all of you, but... Yeah, both your kids are in danger. Because the EpiPens are out there too. Jesus, a threat. Get away from my daughter. Finally. And calling her my daughter. Jada, just explain what's on with you, please. Take me in. Perfection comes at a price. Yes. Good, good, good. Teamwork. Oh, I love them so much. I'm completely sold. Oof. Whoa. Flamingo. Like, I get that he was... That was a guy that was trying to kill him. There was a lot of rage and anger. He had the adrenaline surging in him. So, like, I'm not making any judgment right now. Obviously, we don't kill the psychopaths. We try and just knock them out or arrest them. But, holy shit. Like, does that mean there's a darker side to Marcus? I just want so many answers. Because these binds don't die unless... Unless what? Unless she's infected someone else. Alice. Alice has all the information and I hate it because I cannot trust that she's going to do anything good with it. She's lying. Agreed. It is time for her to tell me everything. But does she think like Marcus has some kind of illness or something that can only be like the original freeze chamber? I just... Regardless, she... If she isn't a bad person, she's not a good one in the sense that she doesn't look into how things are done and if people are being hurt in her name. They are so cute. Great first date, huh? Definitely memorable. <laughs> Is it an actual first date, this guy's? I didn't know about Jordan. Or the experiments. Or the Then you need to do better because you were all sitting in your office all happily ever after. All this was that no one else get hurt. I'm gonna tell you something. Oh my god, is she actually trying to protect Ryan from Marcus? Oh my god. They burn up in the sun. Oh my they god. Were... So that's why I she was wanting to put him on ice. Holy Marcus shit. The bus. Took over the bus. The Joker. That's the school bus that caused Kate and Beth's accident, right? Son. Marcus has been nothing but nice to me. Sociopaths are charming 95% of the time, Ryan. It's so true. That's what she threw at the college pig. I have spent if I could sideline Marcus for a while, it would buy me some time to find a solution. Now that he's killed, he's surely gonna escalate. Did he kill his dad? Oh my goodness. And like, he's killed now. He's stabbed someone. What's next? I have done since the day we met has been to protect you, Ryan. I was trying to protect them both in a way, and why not telling anyone? Look if I need your help. Oh lord. The sad Joker. This season is so good! Like, I feel like with Batwoman, we kind of had two first seasons. Because although last season was, for a lot of the characters, it was the second season, so characters like Alice and Mary, and I know Jacob's not in anymore, but like Luke, these characters had like second plus season plot lines, kind of as a vibe of a show. Season two was very much another season one, because we were kind of reforming the Bat team and refiguring out how things worked with the new way the world was. So this is kind of like stepping, it's a season two as well as a season three. And it's just, it's amazing so far. Um, I do still have concerns about what stuff is like behind the scenes. I hope it is a safe um, and happy environment for all the cast and crew. Um, and I do hope we hear something about there being like an investigation to make sure that's the case. But, oh my god, this episode. This was a slasher film. This was a horror show. Oh my goodness. What a pig nightmares. Um, I know the pig from Dead by Daylight is like from the Saw movies. I've never seen Saw, I think. Um, but seriously, that was her husband. Um, 
And yeah, when Marcus stabbed him, there was that moment, it was that kind of rage on his face. I think it was the fact that he did it twice, but then he, he did it multiple times, but then he didn't do it like excessively multiple times. But if it was coming up from behind him, he could have whacked him on the head. He could have stabbed him in the shot. Like he could have done something to try not to kill him. Um, and he did seem very intense when he did it. But then the shock on his face afterwards, I was kind of like, oh, maybe I was starting to read too much into that. They've been so good with the twists and the turns and keeping us guessing. Um, it was just that the way Jada was talking in the last episode, like it's time for my son to take his little vacation. She should have like been turning around in her chair and I said, see you Mr. Bond. You know, it was, it was very villainous, which obviously was a red herring to throw us off a little bit because I do believe her in this episode. And maybe she was partly acting that way because she had someone she was trying to impress. And so yeah, she's been trying to keep Ryan away from Marcus. Now I still, the question of who Ryan's father is is important to me. I'm no longer concerned that she was trying to keep Ryan in a secret over that. It was just because it was an affair. Um, that she'd had and she was an important person. I maybe, I mean, I guess I was gonna say maybe she wouldn't want her husband to know, but I think he'd have noticed. Um, so there is a lot going on there. And obviously, Marcus is only a year older than Ryan. So it's not like he'd already had this happen. And I'm like pretty sure, I mean, maybe the Joker took over many school buses. Maybe that was one of the things he liked to do on a sat on, it wouldn't be a sat it was a school bus. But Kate and Beth, the Joker had hijacked a school bus when they are, they had their accident and that all happened. So was it the same day? Is that day going to have been a formative day for so many characters on this show? The villain origin story of both Sad Joker, I mean I'm sorry he did it sad, not happy, a Sad Joker and um, Alice, as well as the origin story of the first Batwoman as well. I just, it's so intense, I'm so excited to learn more and I just, everything about this, you know, the lengths Jada was willing to go to seemed extreme and you were kind of like, is she just a super villain? But it's her son and it breaks your heart because I, I believe her and I believe that she does love him because she's his son. He's her son and she loves her son and she wants what's best for him. But obviously there comes a point when, you know, really what she should have done is had him sent to a good facility for those with that with sociopathic tendencies or, or you know put somewhere where he could be monitored where he couldn't hurt anybody else and maybe before he'd done any stabbing or anything maybe it, it would have been okay but I do think having committed a murder I mean it was self-defense but the sensation of stabbing someone and like killing them taking their life from them will still to him feel like murder um I do worry that this is going to send him on a spree and he's a very well connected and wealthy young man who is very good at being charming um, even though he's not actually feeling those feelings that he seems to express and I think some of that explains why he like would easily get so mad at Ryan for not immediately doing what he wanted it makes sense now um, so I've loved those twists and I'm so excited and scared and it breaks my heart that Ryan you know she's found this family and it could have been like a happy ever after for her the husband's dead um you know she could kind of be integrated into this family without there being too many awful things I was loving that she had a brother who was caring about her um I did see a comment and um, someone left him on my videos I'm sorry I can't remember who, who it was that suggesting that Luke Fox Luke, yeah Lucian Fox could be Ryan's father because Jada mentioned having an employee that was poached by Wayne and it could be him and like why I would like that was because Ryan would still get a brother out of it and it would be someone that is already a brother to her um, but I don't necessarily think that is the case yet it is a possibility but there are many possibilities and I just hope she finds out it's eventually I mean Jada surely can tell her um but for Ryan she kind of felt like she was getting this brother and she'd never had that before or she, she has a mother that she loves that has died Maybe now she can get a connection with Jada. Can Jada do some like, Jess Jaturian Industries stands by the CEO of, of Wayne Enterprises and help refix the stock? Or are they gonna have to pretend to still be at odds so that Marcus doesn't suspect anything? Um, I'm just, I feel like that ending wasn't Marcus is gonna, you know, go to bed and sleep it off and wake up and be like, I think I'll take a few weeks off murdering. I feel like that could potentially be the start of Marcus, Marcus's rampage. And oh, I'm so excited. And I think Jada's not a villain, but she's not a good person either. In the sense that she is an extremely wealthy capitalist. Um, she probably votes Republican, or at least has a lot of ideological sympathies with them. Um, and she's someone who doesn't think about the consequences or the realities, you know, I think it probably is true that she no doubt said, um, my god that food's disgusting, 
one day or like oh god I can't eat that who made that go get me something else and they fired the chef or something I mean maybe she said I'll fire the chef the question I would definitely want to know is if she like blacklisted him or if it was just kind of oh he was fired from Jaturian Industries therefore we don't want him I don't know um which obviously is it's not caring about people that work for you it's not caring about people who rely on their income to survive when you're sitting up there in your glass tower also the fact that I, it struck me last episode as when and the guy was like we did some bad things to get this for you and she was like corporate espionage and he was like hmm and she was like well if that's what it is that's how just what that was her not wanting to know more she was prioritizing herself and her son over everyone else and now from like a mother's perspective i can understand that but it doesn't make her a good person um and i can give her some credit for the fact that like she didn't know but she was willfully not knowing also for the way she's treated ryan i'm glad that i'm kind of like vindicated i mean not that i was ever not being vindicated unvindicated the fact that there were the moments when ryan hurled abuse at her or i mean she never has hurled abuse at her but said things like i'm happy better off without you and all that kind of thing it was genuine hurt on her face because probably there had been a part of her that would have dreamt of being able to meet her daughter one day when it was safe to do so and I guess as soon as her son became a sociopath she was like well that's not safe it's just so sad to think that he was her sweet boy and then this happened and now she's so, for such a powerful woman she's so powerless to help him because she's tried behind his back and she's so scared that at any moment he could do something the responsible thing to do is to get him committed somewhere I truly do believe where he cannot hurt anybody because he's about to go on a murder spree it feels like um there was just such a good twist the Sophie and Ryan fake dating was it was beautiful um I think fake dating works best when they're a little bit more oblivious of their feelings for each other but I feel like hopefully they're starting to realize that maybe she does like me too and I would love to know if going forward they will count that as the actual first date um they've won me over part of me I think part of why I was hesitant about shipping them was in some ways because I felt sad for Kate I know Kate has left but I was kind of like oh she was kind of left to figure things out after everything she'd been through and maybe she Sophie should have a chance and I was sort of thinking you know like as a viewer we spent two seasons essentially one season really and then a second season where we kind of were hoping Kate was alive and all that sort of rooting for them one day to get together um now I guess they're not going to keep Kate around as a main character ever although they did like recast her so I, I do feel like bad for that actress that she can't be like I don't know eventually Kate couldn't come back and take on a different role within the bat team because she's a different personnel or something but I do understand um I so I was kind of hesitant that Sophie would just be the love interest again you know that they would just have Sophie once more hanging around being the um that kind of that was just why would Sophie be with both of that women but they have such chemistry better chemistry than um she had with Kate there's just something about them that I just oh, I like spent the first couple of episodes like oh, I like them but I don't know and now I'm like I'm you, you've got me I'm sold um oh I'm just I'm just stressed about Marcus and then Mary see when Mary first broached that topic with Alice if Alice had been honest then Mary would have given her guidance because Mary was being like despite the fact that I cannot stand you I'm here to help you kind of thing whereas this Mary is losing herself to the poison ivy infection in the same way that Pamela did you know she's going from being a compassionate person to being someone that only cares about plants and doesn't care who she hurts along the way now obviously I love the idea that poison ivy is like a villain trying to save the planet but like you can't kill people to do it yes there is that part of me that could flippantly make a comment like why don't we just go and murder all the oil execs and all the people that benefit from oil like the companies and then that'll be fine but realistically that would not be a good way to do things um I'm scared about what this means for Mary because it does seem to me as though she is slowly but surely going to become more and more infected and the only person to have noticed is Alice. Now I know Alice has spent the most time with her but Mary walked in extraordinarily freaked out saying that she had spent the night out in a park and she didn't know what happened essentially and then Ryan was like oh you know I'll speak to you later and understandably things happened. The Sophie's sister went missing, then the Wayne stock was crashing, and there was a lot to do. And I guess Mary kind of was like, oh, come on, you're not paying attention to me, fine. But they need to be better at noticing each other when they are struggling in that way. I mean, they saw her guzzling down the water because plants need a lot of water. But I just, I'm worried, um, very worried that they're not going to notice and that Alice is the one that's noticed. And you, I, I would like to think Alice would just try to help Mary. I really would. But 
the look on her face at the end was not the look of someone that was like, I'm just gonna go help her then, let her know what's happening. It was the look of someone that's like, I know something you don't know. And with Alice, I, I, I worry about what she's gonna do. Is she gonna try and make, make sure Mary does go full blown poison ivy and hurt people so then she can be like, see, you're just as bad as me when, well no, because you even said that with the, the sort of craziness or the disassociation that you went through before when you've killed people, you were in control of it more so than you are now. Which I think if Mary, this does happen to Mary and she does become a villain or hurt anybody, she's not in control, it's not her fault. I genuinely, every show I watch, every book I watch, I mean like 99 times out of 100, my favourite character gets some form of possession, brainwashing, mind control and hurts people. I pick the characters that they do that to. Why? This is turning into one of those plot lines, I have a feeling. Because Mary, the way she lashed out at Alice, you know, Mary might have made a couple of veiled comments like that, or not so veiled comments, but she would have tried to help her because that was why she asked her in the first place. But obviously in this case, she's already losing herself to the poison ivy thing. It's been a good few days now, um, maybe even a week. She's clearly infected. She's guzzling water. She's growing plants left, right and centre. And Alice knows. And I just... I'm scared about what Alice is going to do with that information and I'm also scared about what Alice is not going to do with that information. I love that she didn't tell Montoya, I'm here for that because I'm still not entirely sure I trust her. Having more of her backstory, her, her reasonings behind this, and maybe even if her true motive is to try and track down her ex um, and try and help her, I could totally understand I can't totally understand, but I can see why she's being this ridiculous way she is with Batwoman and with Alice and kind of putting all these ultimatums on these impossible tasks. It's because she's desperate. It doesn't make it okay, but I can kind of understand it um, more than I did. So, like, I like her a bit more, but I'm still like, would you throw us all under a bus in order to save her? I just would like to check. Um, for Alice, the hallucinations are not going anywhere. And I, for one, I am holding out hope that this is actually a sign of her psyche trying to heal. That this is a sign that her brain is trying to say, it's okay to be Beth, or I want to be Beth. You know, we don't need the Alice protection now. If we came back, like, I want to be Beth again. That is what I am hoping. Now, do I think she's going to totally shift and become Beth and, you know, be a hero? No. But I do wonder if it's like, in the same way that she she willfully imposed the Alice persona on herself to protect herself and like I understand that but now it is her mind rebelling against that and being like we don't need this anymore if we're Beth our dad would write to us our dad loves Beth you know when he basically commit confessed to helping Alice he went on the tv and said but I know that she's a villain but please remember Beth Beth is a victim you know Alice there is a split like Kate loved her and the part of Alice that was fighting for Kate was Beth it wasn't Alice so I think that's what I'm hoping it is, but we will see. This was a fantastic episode. Every episode of this season has been amazing. I, this show for me is a real fre breath of fresh air in the Arrowverse. And I don't know if that's just because it's the newest one. Um, I don't personally count Stargirl as being in the Arrowverse. Is it in the Arrowverse? Because I feel like they're not on the same Earth. Um, this is currently the last Arrowverse show I'm watching now as of yesterday, which is a lot. But yeah, I, I'm just so excited to see where the season goes next. A reminder that you can find the unedited version of this reaction on my Patreon. Thank you for watching.